Hi, welcome. My name is Jeff Wagg, and I have this channel called Built to Go, and I also have a podcast by the same name. I've been talking about this fridge for a while. The story is that Set Power contacted me and said, Hey, try out our fridge. We'll send you one for free. And that was it. <laughs> there were no conditions. They didn't say, you have to give us a good review. I had already bought a fridge for my ambulance that I'm building out, and it's too big. I'm disappointed in it. This, this is the ideal size for me. Now this unit, this style, comes in three different sizes. This is actually the smallest of this size, and Set Power sells a whole bunch of different fridges. But I'm going to stick with this one, the AJ30, 30 liters, and talk about its pros and cons. So here's everything that comes in the box. You've got the refrigerator, the power adapters, one for the house and one for your van or car. You've got the handles, which are not assembled, which is good. Now, I chose to put them on for this demo, but I think I will probably end up taking one off. And then there's this diagram that shows just how much the thing will hold. And if you look here, it will say that it holds 44 cans or two bottles. We'll get into that later. Now with all small fridges, especially chest fridges, you're going to be playing a game of Tetris no matter what when you load this. Here I have just some basic groceries that I might have in the van with me, and I'm going to try to put them in here wherever it makes sense. I have seven cans in here. This is a pork tenderloin. And a bottle of water for good measure. All right, the big test. Can I close this? Let's put this back on. Dun, da, da. Yeah, no problem. I probably could have fit more stuff in there. So this is a nice little unit. Okay, so let's do the can test. How many cans can I actually fit in this thing? Well, I think maximum canage, you're going to want to take out the basket, which is not a big deal. All right, well, that's 24 cans. And there's plenty of space left. Let's get more cans. This right here is the leash. And if you connect that to this white part here, it'll make it so that the lid can't be left open. And that's a good thing. That way you'll never leave your fridge open by accident. But if you're loading it and you do want to leave the lid open, just undo it. All right, good to know. You cannot put cans upright in the small shelf. They must also be laid down. So if you were going to set this thing as a freezer and hoping to have a few cans up here that weren't frozen, that might be doable. You just have to make sure they're on their sides. All right, so I have 42 cans in here right now, and I can close it just fine. Can I maybe do 44? No, I think not. 44. I guess if you were more clever in your packing than I am, you might be able to get more in here, but heck, it's 42 cans. That's a lot of cans. Okay, now if you're going to put in a reasonable number of cans, it's nice to note that they fit in perfectly in the basket. So if I had set this at, say, 37, which is a fairly normal refrigerator temperature, my sodas would be really, really cold, and then as we go up, the temperature would decrease a bit. So I could put a bag of lettuce on top, and then my other stuff here. But what about wine bottles? You can see that if you put it in the basket, the lid just doesn't close. But they did think of that, and they put these little indentations in. The wine bottle fits right in there, and the cover closes perfectly. What I don't see in here is how much power this draws. So we know that it'll work on 12 volts to 24 volts, and we know that the power adapter will produce 6 amps at 12 volts. In fact, it outputs 13.5 volts at a maximum of 6 amps. So let's see how much it actually draws. I happen to have here a regulated power supply. So let's change this up to 13.5. And now let's see how much it draws. So even though it's off, I'm still getting a draw of 0.035. That's nothing. All right, now I'm going to turn it on. I'm just going to press the power button. And it's on max. Now the compressor hasn't turned on yet. Let's set the temp to 37. All right, it's set at 25 right now. I'm going to set it to 37, and it's on max. Okay, the compressor just turned on. Maybe you can hear that. You absolutely can use one of these with a Jackery or a Goal Zero or one of the knockoffs. The compressor has really ramped up now. It's up to 4.6 amps, 60 watts at 13.5 volts. Not all that much. 
but it is tricky to do math on how much these things use. Not because these numbers can't be trusted, but because these will not run constantly. They will run until they hit the set temperature and then they'll stop. And it could stay off for half an hour, it could stay off for five minutes. That all depends on the ambient temperature, how much space you have around. And make sure you have space around here for airflow, that's going to matter a lot. Temperature's already going down. When I first got this unit, I turned it on and put a couple of bottles of water in here and just left it. And it had reached the temperature I'd set, which was 37, in 15 minutes. So it will cool things down very, very quickly. Now I have it on max and it's drawing this much power. Let's change it over to eco and see if that changes. You hear it going down? Yeah, see that? It's slowing down the compressor a bit. Now we're down below, way below three amps. I'm gonna turn it back on max and see if that makes a difference. Yeah, did you hear it ramping back up? So, on this one, max sends more power to the compressor. It means it will cool things down quicker, but that will cost you some energy. But it's still not very much energy. If this thing is drawing less than five amps when it's running as hard as it can, I'm feeling pretty good about it. Changing the temperature is pretty easy. You just go up or down. It, it makes a lot of sense. And to switch from eco to max, you just press the little settings button. Very simple. If you'd rather change the temperature, well, you can do that too. It's a little bit more complicated. You have to turn it off and then press these two buttons. And then plus or minus will switch between Celsius and Fahrenheit. Press the power button again and you're good to go. Battery saver works a little differently. It's the same concept, but you press different buttons. Turn it off and hold down the settings button and the power button and then choose whichever level of battery saving you want. If you're hooked up in your house, you'll never need this. But if you're working off your starter battery, I recommend you use it because it will save your battery. There's a fuse by the plugs, it's 15 amps. There's a light on the adapter that tells you when it's on. And believe it or not, it's UL listed, so it's actually a decent AC-DC adapter. What I really like about this is that the adapter is just a 12 volt socket. You can use this for anything. As long as it doesn't draw more than six amps, you can power anything you have with the adapter for your fridge. It's like getting a bonus device, which I'm pretty happy about. If you look under the cigarette lighter plug, you'll notice there's no fuse. That's because there's one in the refrigerator itself. Make sure to keep the vents clear on both sides. One is for air coming in and one is for air going out. All right, let's talk about some cons, just to be fair. One is it doesn't have wheels. I don't care about that. But if it did have wheels, you wouldn't need to build a drawer for it. You could just install pieces of wood that would keep it from going side to side and you'd be all done. But okay, that's not a big deal. What it does have is very grippy feet, which is a good thing in a moving vehicle. Another con is that the temperature, when it finally reaches temperature, it will vary a bit. And what it seems to do is go past the mark you set. So I like to set for 37. That's a fairly common temperature. It will cool down to 35 or even 33. And then let that creep up to maybe 39 and then go back to 37 or actually go back all the way down. So the temperature you set is going to be the median temperature that it will keep the food. It will not hold that temperature perfectly. Now I can't criticize this too much for that because they all do that. This is not a precision device. If you want a fridge that's that precise, you're going to spend $1,000 or more. This is less than $300, which in my book makes it a bargain. Another con, and it's not really that big of a deal, is that it's a bit loud. It's a sound that I think I can live with, and the way you install it in the van is really going to mitigate how much sound there is. If you have it in a compartment with lots of ventilation, you may not hear it at all. But here's a test on just how much noise it makes so we have something to talk about. If it's completely quiet and all you can hear is the fridge, it is at 45 decibels. I'm going to move the microphone close to the compressor so you can hear what the actual sound is. And that's right over here. Now, as you may have guessed, the good folks at Set Power did provide a code that you can use to get one of these at a discount. You will receive at least 12% off. 
You might receive more. It depends on what the promos are at the time. But no matter what, you will receive at least 12% off. And I'll bet you can even guess what the code is. That's right. The code is built to go. If you put built to go as your coupon code when you check out, you will get 12% off. If you have an experience with this fridge that isn't the same as me, let me know. Put it in the comments. Maybe I'll do a follow-up review. But right now, this thing seems awesome, and I'm looking forward to some warm temperature so I can head out with this in my van and see how it performs when it's really hot out. Because honestly, they sent it to me in winter, and I can only do what I can do. There's links in the show notes. Everything you need is right there. And a quick note on this company. As you know, there are lots of inexpensive 12 volt compressor fridges out there. They're flooding the market. So how do you pick which one to get? Some of them have really unusual names. You don't know who the company is. That's what sets set power apart. I mean, okay, the name set power, you can say it. That's a good thing, but the manual is actually readable. Now it's not perfect. <laughs> you will find errors in here. It's also available online. And if you look at their website, and I recommend you do, you will find that they have a manual, they have videos illustrating how to use things, they have warranty support, they tell you how to get warranty support. It's, it's a real company, and that is a very valuable thing. If you have a problem with this, you have somebody that you can go to for help. And I don't think that's true for the other fridges I've had. So let me know if you have any questions about it. I'm happy to answer them. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you down the road.